Hello, welcome to Rob's Models and I am Rob and many thanks for joining me today and today we're having a review, an unboxing, I haven't opened this box, I'm quite excited about it and it is of a Hornby Class 47. The reason I'm quite excited about it is because um, although this was a bit of a cheapie, I got it for a bit of a bargain, we'll go through that more in a minute, um, well actually if I just explain, we've got the reference number on there is R3393TTS. Now, what that TTS stands for is basically sound. Now, and this is Hornby's budget range to, uh, for sound. Uh, it's the, the starter one. When you're actually adding sound, it can get very, very expensive. I've not been completely convinced about sound. I think although it sounds great, it's got realistic sound effects, it doesn't always seem to fit to scale. I'm not too sure there's something about it that doesn't quite work, but I thought maybe it's just myself, um, maybe it's just me. And this is quite a, an introductory model. Um, I believe it's of the railroad range. Yes, the railroad range, and that means it's uh, a bit cheaper than um, the, the, the regular ones. It's not going to have quite the fine detail, and I think that will also come across on the sound as well. Uh, we're meant to have quite a few sort of sounds in here. Uh, we will find them out. So first of all, let's get this box opened. See what we've got here. The standard uh, Hornby packaging. Uh, slide it out here and of course it's all in the uh, polystyrene I've uh, got the instructions there something else there two instruction parts and uh, I always just check there's nothing tucked away in any of these somewhere else I have sometimes found obviously you get little uh, extras tucked in uh, a bit of acetate on the front, uh, that tape's already been cut through, so let's just open that up. And um, here she is, wrapped up in a little bit of extra polythene wrap. Here we are, Hornby's Class 47 Loco. So here we are, so nothing else amongst that. Let's move that out of the way, see what else we have here. So um, let's just pop her there for a moment. Uh, let's see what we have here. Two uh, bits of paper here. Uh, we have the Class 47 Sound Decoder Manual. And what have we got here? The Class 47 Coco Diesel Electric DCC Ready DCC Fitted uh, Sound Operating Instructions. Uh, I was a bit concerned when I first got this uh, looking at the price. Uh, I got this for uh, just under £70 from Rails of Sheffield. By the time PMP was added, it came to just over £70. Uh, whilst I was looking around, I also noticed you can actually buy the sound chip by Hornby, which is the, D, uh, the DCC decoder chip that, that plugs in with the, the eight pins on, on the loom uh, with a speaker on there. And that, can, that was separate, and that was um, about £40 to £50. Pounds. And what I was worried is that I was buying the shell, and then I was going to have to then spend that extra money to put that in afterwards. I was a little bit concerned, I knew it should be fine, but no, by the seam of this, it is all DCC fitted, so it's ready to go. So in effect, it's almost like, buy this, uh, buy, buy, the, buy the chip for the sound decoder already fitted, and it's almost like get the actual shell, the, the train itself, for an extra 20 or 30 pound. So, for review purposes, I thought that was going to be good. Uh, so let's see here, it goes through general instructions, the routine maintenance, cleaning, generally how to use DCC. Uh, we've got the uh, body removal, remove the buffers, um, pull apart, um, it's got DCC ready. If your locomotive is not pre-fitted with a decoder, so it does actually explain about the fitting a decoder, how to pop back on it appears there's going to be three locking points there and of course just tells you where to lubricate it so that's the general overall instructions for the class 47 and this one here which is a bit more thicker is uh, regarding the sound the twin track sound TTS twin track sound let's see this is um Yeah, there's definitely a, a, a bit more to this. Just check this is all in English. I've had it before when you get a massive instruction book and you realise there's actually eight languages, so that's fine. So go through the main features. Now this model doesn't actually have lights. It is just purely uh, the sound. 
Uh, I think you can get a bit of aftermarket lighting put in. Um, put some LEDs in, I'm sure if you wanted to, you could very easily drill out the um, whether the, the lights go on there and uh, put some small LEDs in if you're up for doing a bit of modification. Goes through the CVs, the, the function lists, and just check that's, that's 25 sounds, not including, uh, let's just check, um, please, what's a 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, two, four, yeah, 20, 25 sounds, and just won't read through them all, but, um, oh, toggle headlight off for actually 24 sounds, because F0 was for the lights by the team of it. Engine start and stop, horns going from high to low, low to high, you've got your brake squeal, um, oh, notch up and notch down, so in increase that, um, the throttle, return to idle, you've got cold starts, uh, horns, different types of horns, the fan, um, different valves, different horn settings, so um, my wife's going to be really enjoying the sounds of those come blasting through. Um, understanding diesel and electric locomotive, so actually it does give you a bit of an idea on, on here of how um, locomotives work and I guess that's going to help when you're trying to set up the sounds uh, so you know when you're going to be putting what sounds in. Uh, general decoder information and uh, let's see, coming through on the back, or have I started on the back? No, that's coming through. Uh, about the decoders, uh, different volume controls, and the various CV settings, so you can actually adjust the... Uh, each, each of those sounds has got its own uh, volume range, so you can tweak those. Uh, I think sometimes what's off put, um, I found off putting is uh, when all the volume levels seem to have a, um, a, 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 a default. Oh, it does actually have here a column of suggested volume levels. So, for example, a prime is going to be a bit, lot lower, um, a horn is going to be a lot louder, the fan is going to be um, out of you know, four. So, I think those are on um, zero to eight. So, that's good. We can set that up. Sometimes, um, my, my, well, my father-in-law um, actually had a, a Steam Loco TTS sound one that she played with. And it was fun for a bit, but I could tell if you really wanted to get the most out of it, you really need to... Um, sit down, read the manual, read the book, connect it up um, and, and change the, those settings on the chip to uh, really get the most out of it. So let's look at the Loco itself. Um, actually it's not too bad a weight. Immediately um, I'm finding, um, yeah, the, the weight's quite good, it, so it should have quite good traction on there. Um, that does feel plasticky is probably the, the, the immediate thing that comes through. It does look a little bit plasticky, um, which to be honest, this is part of the, the railroad series, and these are introductory models. These aren't the fine detailed ones. Uh, of course, if you um, don't mind having a bit of a, um, a play with things, of course, you can go a bit aftermarket, add on some extra details to it. Um, I know, for example, the fans on the top, now that is just, moulding. It's actually done quite well. There is some depth to it, but it is all just uh, one piece. Um, but you could cut those out, make it photo etch uh, the brass to uh, really go in there and, you know, replace some of these parts, do some of the conversions on there. Actually, you've got those doors. That actually, although it's moulded and it's all just what the body shell is just, just one piece, I've got to say the detail on there um, some of it is actually quite fine. There is some, you've still got some, you know, rivets running around. Some of it, I guess, is a little bit clunky. Uh, obviously, you've seen got a uh, little window that uh, goes through there. Um, little window in. And window's actually, that one's blocked off, so that would be the, well, but yeah, you can sort of see through. So it's, um, hmm, I would say, although, yes, it's one piece more to plastic, it's quite clunky, if you wanted to go to town on it with a bit of photo etch, a bit of aftermarket, uh, maybe replacing buffers or something like that, uh, replace those fans. Uh, some of this down the side I'm sure you could probably find somewhere as well. The windscreen wipers, actually the windscreen wipers are, no, no that's just raised um, plastic uh, on the, the actual clear plastic, got a raised part and very, very carefully, it looks like it's just had a black line put on. I thought there were separate wipers on there. But, um, yeah, I'm sure you could quite easily just um, drill out the, the lights if you wanted to um, add lights on there. You've got seats in the cab. 
uh, of course both ends and actually I've got to say for a quite I mean to be honest when you're looking at the side of these things they are just a, you know, a block they've, they've not um, you know when the, these freight things they, they were um, they, had, they had a purpose and that purpose was to lug freight I'm sure if you get one of these um, and just simply weather it up uh, I think uh, that wouldn't you know it would take it I mean yeah that's the, that's separate. I wasn't too sure if that was separate handrails on there. No, it's moulded, but again, it's just had a little bit of white paint on there. Just to lift those out. But I'm sure a little bit of dry brushing on the top, weather it all in. Um, yeah, it does actually just confirm they're DCC fitted, uh, which actually is a bargain sometimes because um, when you actually buy what's what you think is going to be um, quite a cheap locomotive. And then by the time you actually want to change it to DCC and, and pop a DCC chip in there and you add on another 20 quid for that, a, a cheap railroad um, model, uh, for example, I got um, Hornby's Alton Hall and that was quite cheap. I think I picked that up for about um, 70 or 80 pound. By the time you add 20 pound, you're still into a 100 pound locomotive. Uh, so this, for it to be fitted with the sound, all for 70 pounds, I think is a bargain. Um, yeah, it's got some weight to it. You've got your regular couplings, um, which is get your stamped with all Hornby. Yeah, we're going to see how it runs, but I think uh, for seventy pounds, I mean the RRP on this is ninety nine ninety nine, I believe. Uh, Rails of Sheffield, I got this from. It was part of a pre Christmas offer, but it seemed to be I bought this in January, and it was still still an offer. I'm sure they've probably got some in stock if you look around, but for £70, I think this would be a bargain. So I think the next thing we're going to do is to uh, get it on the track, uh, get it going around, see what the settings are like straight out the box, and then have a bit of a play with things, and then see, um, see what it's actually like uh, once you've actually got those settings in place. So let's have a look at that.